What's going on, everyone? My name is Aaron, and this is Dad.0. Now, because this is Dad.0, I do occasionally like to review some tech parenting products, including but not limited to camera setup and baby monitoring. And it seems simple enough, but as a parent, this is one of the most important pieces of tech you're going to buy, and you don't really realize it until you buy one that doesn't work properly. And about a year ago, I reviewed one of the most popular baby monitors on Amazon, the Infant Optics DXR8. And overall, I did like it. However, it did have a pretty small display compared to a lot of other baby monitors out there. It only had a three and a half inch display and the resolution left a lot to be desired. However, Infant Optics has updated this baby monitor and now has this Infant Optics DXR8 Pro, which has a five inch display and finally has a 720p HD resolution. So I decided to pick one up, compare it to the previous model, and see if this is the best baby monitor on the market. First, I just wanna show you what you get in the box with the DXR8 Pro. Opening this up, you have the five inch monitor on top here. Again, 720p looks very similar to the previous model, just a little bit bigger. You also have the camera. Again, it looks pretty similar to the previous model with kind of a silo design with a pivoting head. You also get charging cords and wall adapters for both. You get an additional zoom camera lens, and then also you get mounting screws to mount this on a wall. One of the things that I love about the Infant Optics monitor is that it runs on its own 2.4 gigahertz channel, which means you don't have to connect this to your Wi-Fi at all. You basically just plug it in and it connects to itself and you're set to go. Not only does this make for a super simple setup, but it also is more secure and reliable if someone were to hack into your network or if your router were to go down, you still have access to see your baby monitor. On top of that, I just really like that it has its own monitor and I don't have to use an app or my phone or a different device as a baby monitor because some of the only times I get to use my phone or other devices is when my child is napping or down for the night, so I don't want to have to use that as a baby monitor as well. And like I said, setup is incredibly simple. All you have to do is plug in the camera in your child's room, and then you just turn on the monitor. The two connect to each other in roughly a second or two, and you're set to go. You can literally have this up and running in under a minute. Taking a look at the monitor itself, again, it has a 5-inch screen with a 720p resolution. On the right-hand side, you have your buttons for navigation. On the left hand, you have a sound LED bar. On top, you have your on, off, and sleep button, your brightness adjustment, and volume adjustment. These are nice shortcuts to have compared to the previous model. On the back, you have the folding antenna for better range. You have the speaker and you have the foldable kickstand. And on the left side, you have your power input. Now, when you turn on the monitor, you're immediately shown the live video of the camera feed. On the top, you have kind of a status bar. You can see your connection level with the camera, how far you're zoomed in, if it's on night mode or not, the volume level, which camera you're looking at, the temperature, the time, and the battery level. You can move the camera around by pressing the arrows on the right side, and then you can start using the buttons to start interacting with the monitor. So you can press the zoom button to zoom in once, or you can zoom in twice if you really wanna see something closer. You can press the talk button if you wanna use the two-way intercom system. The okay button is kind of your select button or to change cameras. And then pressing menu will bring up a list of other settings that you can adjust. The first one is sleep mode you can set the display to go to sleep after a certain amount of time and just have the audio on to save battery you have an alarm timer that you can set so if your child is on a feeding schedule and you know you have to get them up at a certain time you can set that here you have an alert warning setting so when the monitor is low on battery or out of range you can get an alert tone and you can set what alert tone you want that to be and the volume of it you can add delete and view cameras and then you have a general settings where you can turn on or off noise reduction you can set the time the temperature scale whether you want that to be fahrenheit or celsius and then there's a few other settings that you can play with here so that's kind of the overview of what you get and how to use it let me just go over my experience with the infant optics dxr8 
Pro over the last two months. And I have to say, I've used a lot of baby monitors, but this one is my favorite, at least so far, because in my belief, they took the DXR8, and while that was a great baby monitor, there was some issues with it that I wish they improved. And I think with the DXR8 Pro, they took those issues and they fixed them all, and they came out with just a high quality product here. Specifically, the things I'm loving, like I said earlier, it runs on its own 2.4 gigahertz channel, the improved screen size, and the improved resolution. I think five inch screen size is perfect to see things clearly. And a lot of people think 720p isn't even full HD. How is that good? In my opinion, 720p on a five inch screen is still a great resolution to see everything clearly that you need to see. And it still provides amazing battery life. Whereas if you get into higher resolutions, you're going to start sacrificing battery life. And speaking of battery life, this one still has great battery life. One of the best of any baby monitors that I have tested and battery life really depends on how you use this. If you have the display on for a long periods of time, you're going to get way less battery than someone that has the display on sleep and just uses the sound. Or if you have the volume turned way up, that's going to eat more battery than someone that has the volume turned down. Same thing with brightness. But what I can tell you is that I have left the display on for an entire nap of my two-year-old, which is roughly three hours, and I still had plenty of battery life left. And at night, I normally leave the display on until she falls asleep, and then I'll put the display on sleep and just use the volume. And there are periods where I'll go five, six hours without putting this on the charger, and I still don't get a low battery warning. Range has been excellent too. Now, again, this is going to kind of depend on your specific house, what materials it's made out of, how many walls the signal is going through, and those types of things. But in my opinion, this has really great reception. I haven't gotten an out of signal warning in any room in my house, I can go in the farthest parts of my backyard and still get almost full coverage. And that is through a couple interior walls and an exterior wall. So again, I rarely even have to pull up the antenna because this has such great range. The other things I'm loving, I love the sound LED bar on the left side. When you have the display on sleep and the volume low, this is really nice to be able to kind of keep track of the sound levels in your child's room. I love the quick access buttons on top for brightness and volume. I think the overall form factor of the monitor is nice and slim. I have no problem fitting this into my pocket if I'm moving around the house or if I go outside. And overall, like I said guys, this is my favorite baby monitor that I personally have tested so far that is most importantly reliable and easy to use. So if you're interested in the DXR8 Pro, I'll put a link in the description below where you can check it out, get some more information on it, buy it if you want. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get to them. I appreciate everyone that watched to the end. If you like this video, press that like button and consider subscribing. Again, thank you guys and I'll catch you on the next video.